have a quorum. I expect some others to be joining us a few minutes, but uh, we'll start. Wow. We kept 10 minutes to the end, right? That's right. wrong. There's nothing. No, no I know that, but it, on, on oh. seven, it starts at 7. Yeah. Thank you for teams for raising your hand. Yep. Oh. Pick something at the bottom. Okay. Ms. D'Angelo, would you like to talk about 14 Strawberry Hill Lane? Yeah, we, we have 10 minutes till the first item on the agenda, and we can't start until 7.10. So if you'd like to come up. Oh, come on up. Okay, and your name? And you're at 14 Strawberry? You're representing? I live at 15 Strawberry Hill. Okay. So I can give a little background. Um, uh, Mona uh, received a order of condition back in 2009, and through the Permit Extension Act, it was extended until um, April 27, 2016. I think that's when our um, April 28, 2016, and. Um, it was at that point that um, she realized and I realized that we needed to extend her order of condition. So um, she sent an application for that and the commission would, wanted to give her the opportunity to, to come to the meeting and discuss with the commission the plans and that's why she brought the plans and the procedure to move forward. So that's that's where we are this otherwise this is a typical extension permit to an order of conditions and it's the first one outside that that this order has received outside of the permit extension act I've got a, an initial question um, if I can Jennifer, sure. go ahead. Madam Chair. Um, I think one of the discussion points we had at the last meeting was um, could you just expand a little bit on what's caused the delay in work up to this point? Yeah. Um, well, <clears throat> when we brought, when we brought, when conservation gave us the permit, the next day when I went to the building department to get the building permit, I was told that they had changed the lot size, and so I had to apply for a variance, which I did do. But then it turned out that I didn't need a variance because it had been a bona fide building lot since 1995, and so it was grandfathered. Then we had to notify the abutters. One abutter whose little corner of his land touched mine sued the city and sued me. The city, the town, I should say, not the city. For the development of the property? Hmm? Sued you? I guess it doesn't matter. Sorry, go ahead. So um, I had to hire a lawyer who said, oh, this is a frivolous suit. It's going to go away. And the town said, we're not going to fight this. If you want to fight it, you can fight it, but we're not going to fight it. Okay. So that took over a year. And when it came down to going to court, and then I had to get a second lawyer because the first lawyer didn't do litigation. He was just trying to solve it by the two of us saying okay, I guess. So now when it gets down to litigate, to go into court, the second lawyer said, well, he wants to settle. He wants $35,000. I said, it isn't going to happen. So we bickered back and forth for another few days, and finally he came down to 5000 and I gave him the 5000 So that took up almost two years. Um, now, I've had all kinds of advice today about what I should say and what I shouldn't say. But I'll say, and you can tell me we're not interested. I was married to a man from Maine. We lived two, 200 miles apart for 28 years. Just about the time that I got the building permit, he got sick. And he was in assisted living in Waterville, Maine. And I 
plus I, I own two companies and I work every day. Parts of the year I work six and a half days a week. Summertime I only work five days, but it's a big business. It's an important business to the community. I supply most of the oil dealers within 20 miles of Boston with equipment and I don't, I don't supply them with the oil, parts and equipment. So back to my husband. So he was in assisted, in assisted living in Waterville. I'd go every weekend, try and take care of his business. He had a sim similar business to mine. I was supposed to oversee it because I had the power of attorney. Take care of his house, come back, go to work. Now he got really sick. I brought him to Massachusetts and he was here for, at, with assisted living for about a year. And then when he had to go to rehab, took him out of rehab, took him to our house in Maine, hired people around the clock. And I would stay there three days one week and four days the other, commute back to work. I wasn't even thinking about this house at that time. It was the day before Thanksgiving, and I got a telephone call. My, I better come home. My oldest boy, who has been my partner at work for 30 years, 56 years old, dropped dead at his desk. So now I come back, I take care of that, and now we continue with the business. I have younger sons who work there, but it's a learning process. And essentially, that's where I've been. But I have been working on this house for the last year. Um, my architect, when we got some, I guess we got some kind of uh, order of conditions that were given to my architect, not to me. And he went in and put the silk fence, got the, got the bales of hay, put the gravel, so we wouldn't get dust in the street. And I started talking to people about putting, putting in a foundation and getting this started. And then my husband died. But that didn't, wasn't a huge disruption. It was coming. So we did all that, and I was talking to, um, well, I was talking to a contractor from Newburyport who had done work for me on another house that I built. And uh, he said he'd be there, you know, give him a couple of weeks, a month, you know. So I did. And then he was so busy that he couldn't help, you know, he couldn't even give me an estimate. And I wanted to, be, I wanted to take the boulders that they dug up on the land when they did what they did, took out the trees and put the silk fence. And I had to do it then because once you put in the foundation with the restrictions, there's no room for trucks and what have you to go down back and do it. So we, and we did that. We put the stone wall across the back. Very, very nice. Looks better to the neighbors than it does on my side. But it used the boulders. And if you go around at least the part of Reading I lived in, everyone has a boulder fence wall. Well, so I was trying to keep it in the tenor of the neighborhood, so to speak. So we did that. And that was costly. Then I talked to, in the meantime, M the MTA is expending, I know you think I'm rambling here, but the MTA is expend, extending the green line through Medford and Somerville. And it goes right in the back of my building. So they, they came and they excavated the whole back of my building down below the foundation. And it's a concrete block building. And they paid me rent for rights of way to the tracks that I owned. But um, I got to be friendly with the project manager because he had to come into my office all the time to say this is going to happen, something else is going to happen. 
So halfway through that project, he left the NCA, and his brother is David is uh, no, he's David Shanks. Well, his brother owns Shanks Construction, and he said, you know, we'd like a chance to bid on the house. So I do have. It's not really a concrete bid. It's just an estimate of what my costs would be. And they've had the plans all winter, and they haven't gotten to me yet with a contract or an estimate. Can I ask you a question? Sure. Um, have you gone out to other bids? Well, I have another contractor who I just spoke to this week who's looked at the project. And he discovered that we were missing three pages from the plans. Three pages had not accompanied the plans. So I had to go back to the architect, get new plans, not new plans, <coughs> but you know, copies. Right. And when I got them, they were still missing P1 and P2, which were the plot plans and had the Okay, elevation. so you, you can go back to the architect and get the because he's got those on file, I, I'm assuming. What? I guess the notice of intent. No, no, oh. your architect has all the plans that oh, you. Oh, I got everything. I okay, got everything. all right. Has We're Chuck had set. a chance to look at those or not? No. Those are architectural drawings for the oh, house. As right. long as it's in the same footprint, okay. it's. Um, what? Can you give me an estimate of when you uh, might start this work on this? project because well, you, you're in this you're in the good season to start construction you're out of winter yes well the thing is this winter everyone was it was such a mild winter that all the contractors kept working and they didn't work on for instance my my things they thought you know on a snowstorm they take care of it. well anyway so I have two people that are going to give me bids on the foundation my plan is get the foundation in cap it the bank has said, when the foundation is in, we'll give you a construction loan. My bank is Century, do a lot of business with them, and so So I'm kind of, nobody wants this house built more than I do. Or I wouldn't be sitting here 15 years later, still pleading to help me here and let me get this done. But the house, I don't think, well, the way I build a house is I have to, because I'm a single person, not a builder, I sometimes have to wait for the contractors. I wait for the good finished carpenter. Right. Plumbers, electricians, and, and heating people, I have no trouble with. They're, in my, they're customers of mine that come in that I can get down quickly. But some things won't get down immediately. But the house certainly will be closed in, windows, driveway, whatever. When? When will I start? When will you start and when do you I'm hoping that I start before winter. And that's the best I can say. I have a Why do you have to wait until winter? Oh, I don't, I don't have an estimate right now. If these people come back to me with an estimate of $200,000 for the foundation, which I have had estimates that high, and then the contractors say, that's ridiculous. It should be around 70, and then another 30 for miscellaneous mm -hmm. diggings and what have you. And that's what I expect to be fixed with to get the foundation in about $100,000. But if I don't get, if people don't get back to me with prices, I think Chuck said to me on the phone yesterday he could give me the name of somebody. See, most of the most of the work I've done is done in Maine, and then most of the people that I'm most familiar with. Are no, I, I actually didn't do that. You did say that. I I'm say sorry. That. I thought well, you did say there were a hundred contractors locally, and I took it to mean that you. I said it's something. a building boom. Yeah, in in Reading. Um, I'd like to hear from the other commission members. How do you feel about an extension? I know we gave you a month's extension, but that was really to get you in here and kind of have you explain what you have done. A lot. <laughs> um, but I'd like to hear from you folks. What do you think? Yeah, so I'm, I'm uh, sounds like a similar opinion. You know, I, I want to make sure that this this is not just an extension. You know, three, I don't want to be sitting here three years from now 
saying, well, we need to extend this again. Uh, I don't, really don't want to see it next year that, that things aren't getting done. You know, it, it, this is a, a order of conditions that was issued in 2008, I believe, 2009. So we're, we're sitting here nine years, seven, four, right, seven years later. That wasn't and all our fault. We had the uh, butter thing. But we understand. Understand. That. I, understand. We understand I mean, there's that. there there are a lot of issues w within those years. It's just I I would like to see that there's going to be action. You know, I, I guess the the other aspect of this is you know I, I know you guys have done some work and put in the wall, put in the the rock wall. The but the rock wall is not something that's gone before this commission. That's not something we've seen. So. Has this expanded in the, the seven years? Has the has the project changed? You know, I, I don't know that that's been brought before this commission either. Over the cor over the over the course of these years, since the first time that I applied for permit here, I've come to the con conservation commission with three separate houses. I came in with the normal size house. They said no. I came in with the smaller house. They said no. Then. I went, spent all the money, time, and effort, and had the Vernon Pool decertified. And then the rule was how much space I could have, so that's why the house that's proposed now takes every inch that your, your board said I could have. Because just like when you build at the ocean, you can't come back next year and say, oh, I want to add mm -hmm. something. You have to take what they give you and stay within the limits. I mean, I I built a house at the ocean. I had the permit in six months. I built a house in Saco, Maine, in a flood zone with Rachel. I, I know what I want to. I want to. I want to keep this to Reading, okay? okay. Um, what do you folks feel? I know that um, the building department extended this for your permit for six. Six months. Six months. What would you feel about a year? Well, wait a minute. Let me explain before that. Um, okay. the, so Mona doesn't agree with this. So, but I think I have it right from the building department. Oh. Um, and, and maybe it was just that she wasn't told. So the I was told that this will be a, their building permit will be extended for six months, and then if building. If the building starts within that six month period, they get an additional year. So you have to be complete in a year, but it seems like it's an 18 month time frame. Would the commission? I've got some but, questions. But oh, certainly. Let me add that getting another building permit might be a lot easier than getting another conservation order of conditions. And I wish Al was here and to figure this out, but uh, hmm. I mean, there's a lot more involved. To, yeah, involved with an order of conditions. So to say, well, it's just you know, run in tandem with the building department may not be fair. Harry. So I have two questions: Is the house that's proposed the same, the same footprint as the house approved in the order of conditions in 2009? Yes. So it's the same house design. Okay. Um, and I read something somewhere, and I've read a lot of stuff, so I apologize. I don't remember where it was referenced, that this was one lot of the subdivision of Strawberry Hill Lane that was intended to not be a building lot because of the Vernal Pool at the time. Is that true? No. Yes, not true. Historically, before the Vernal Pool was decertified, it's my memory that that lot was not buildable because of the presence of the vernal pool yeah. okay. and the vernal pool setback um, prohibited construction in this area. Okay. But the vernal pool has since been decertified as Ms. DeAngelis mentioned. I sold the property <coughs> to a builder. He came before whatever board and the property was divided into buildable lots. He came to me and said, I don't want to have to go to conservation. I didn't even know what conservation was. He said, right now, I'm going to take this off the table and get my other eight houses built. Is that all right with you? I said, yes. So he didn't pay me for the lot. Two years, 
after he finished his houses and he didn't pay me and he didn't come back, he got in touch with them. And he said, well, I've moved on. How about you pay me $5,000 for the betterments to that lot and you take the lot back and you build the house. So I thought about it, I said, okay. And um, then I found, then when I came to pay the tax bill, I found out he hadn't paid the taxes all the time he had, he had the property. So I had to pay back taxes, which were $35,000. And up to that point, I never heard of a vernal pool. I never heard of anything. Then I came to conservation and so went on from there. <coughs> Thank you. So uh, I'm still open to the idea, uh, and uh, I guess I'm, I understand Chuck's hesitance of, well, we don't necessarily want to be running right directly in tandem with the building permit, but if we add some extra time, right. the, it gives time so that, you know, that as assuming that this building permit doesn't expire in six months, construction started, I mean, what's, what's the process, uh, if, it, if it were 12 months from now, what's the process? I mean it'd be similar to last week, really, where we're not looking for, you know, it, and building is, has start, begun, as, as <coughs> uh, the applicants indicated. It would really just be a, a vote from the commission to let it continue, and at that point, work's already occurring, correct? I, I, I'm, I'm just trying to, to understand where we would, be, if, if it was a 12-month extension, where, where we would be at. Uh, if they started construction, in six months, it would be it, they'd add it, they'd have another year to another twelve months to to finish, the finish their permit. yeah finish their construction to get the permit, mm -hmm. which I would think would be enough time for you know conservation. But what do you? But you're saying, Chuck, that if we had to go back and do the whole process of getting go through a notice of intent and getting another order of conditions. If we cut it off, it would be a lot. More difficult than a building permit. I think it would be more difficult than a building permit. Can, can I ask another question? I, I mean, not just this one, any, any. Yeah, right, okay. okay. And that's not a reason not to, you know, to say this. I'm not trying to say that. I'm just, I'm just saying that we, that's for the two year process. Yeah. Can we actually do, I mean, I guess we extended something for a month, but. <laughs> we, ex yeah, but t typically the extensions are it's three, three year years. period, yeah, right? Yeah, I so they've already had one of those? No. Just that one month. That, oh. That was their first. Okay. Everything else was extended by the, oh, by, yes, the state. by the state law. You know, I, I would, um, <laughs> I'm, I'm a little bit cautious about um, following uh, the practice the building department has put in place. I think we should do what we think is right for this particular permit in this situation, um, you know. So, I, I I'm I'm not open to the thought of you know having a six month and then after the six month and then contingent one year after that. I think we should just say if we are going to agree to a permit extension, let's just decide on a time, and then and then call it. And and if uh, the applicant wants to come back at the end of that. And you know, and cordially request another extension. At that time, you know, it's free country. Uh, the applicant could do so. Um, I th I think we've waited quite a long time, and I understand there have been extenuating circumstances, um, and I really do sympathize with your extenuating circumstance. But I think we have waited. Um, you know, since 2009, it's been seven years, um, and if and if work hasn't significantly progressed in seven years. I mean, at this point, I don't have a great deal of confidence that it will it will happen in the next year, just based on the track record. So, um, but at the same time, I'm open to um, that one year extension. I'd be open to two years. Can I ask a question? Sure. Sure. Suppose I default. Suppose I don't do anything. I don't touch that land. When, when your extension runs out, that's it. If you want to do something. Does that mean I don't own it anymore? No, no, no. You still own it. <laughs> but you have to but if you want to do, if you want to continue and you have, you've got 
now the where wherewithal with your contract is to start, you would have to file another permit with us because it's within a hundred feet of a resource so, so area. Then I I don't I don't see that anything is to be gained by saying no to the extension at this point. I don't think we're it's necessarily saying no to an extension. I think we are saying, I'd like to hear, I, I spoke that I was open to a one year extension. I have a question. Yeah, yeah sure. Just, w w you know, what does it matter if it's one, two, or three years? What do you hope, what are you trying to, gain out of that to have more control. I mean, uh, uh, a condition like if you have a three-year three -year extension, but if no building starts within six months, you must uh, hydro-seed, uh, you know, hydro -seed the area because it's open and, you know, with a certain seed mix. I mean, that makes more sense because yeah, I mean, we're not in the building point. business. So, so I've got three questions. Um, my understanding is a ten thousand dollar bond. Do you still have that? Yep. Okay. So in a month, or whenever this ex this extension expires, if the project is incompleted, what happens? Or, or if we don't extend, what happens to the bond? Well, if it, she withdraws her project, we will give the bond back. Yeah, the bond. But we'll, with that bond, we'll make sure. We, we would definitely at that point ask that the that the land is hydro seeded and you know stabilized and that if she doesn't do that we would use the bond money to do that okay and so three of the conditions that that the in the order original order seven years ago were the bond stabilizing the site with loam and seed you couldn't just hydro seed it because it's hard to pack like, like concrete right uh, and the, and the third thing is there was a requirement that Concrete or stone bounds be put in. They're in. They're in. I didn't. Okay. Okay. Um, I mean, I think the at this point the overriding concern is turn it back into functional land. I mean, right now you've got something that's as functional as a paved parking lot, and it would be better for the resource area to have vegetation on that site and water from the roof going into the ground instead of it all running off down the hill. So. Based on that, I'm fine with a year or two. With hydro seeding within, within by well, if, she if nothing happens within six months, then yeah. I don't. I think they have to apply for another building permit. So, you know, when's the last point that you could hydro seed? Like in July, August? No, no, no. O o October fifteenth yeah. would be the last. So. If no building starts in, uh, by October, then no hydro seeding. Or yeah, but that's the very end of that. that you're, you're running a risk of getting into the, the frost and it's not taking it, you know what I mean? And that's a sunk cost that, I mean, you're not going to be able to just hydro seed that, right? I mean, you're gonna well, we're not going to tell them what to do. We're going to tell them what we expect. Okay. Um, I just think that's going to be pretty expensive, and then if you're going to start building in the spring, <coughs> you're going to drive all over the hydro seed. Well, it's, it's a... But that's, but, you know, you'd be doing that anyways if you had a grass lawn or something like that if, if for construction if, if they went forward. Okay, I, I'm, I'm comfortable with either way, honestly. <laughs> I go for the extension. Okay. So, I make a motion to... Oh, no, mm -hmm. I, I need to oh, ask you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm something sorry. I always forget. Uh, does anybody from the public have any comments or questions? Hearing none. I make a motion to uh, extend the order of conditions 270-0547 for Strawberry Hill Lane 12 months. Uh, that's With the provision of Hydro seeding within. Well, we'll, have well, to, we'll have to look. If if there's if nothing starts, we'd have to go back to the original order of conditions. Yeah, I mean that's oh, got to okay. be in so the it's order in the, of conditions. It's in there. That but it, it has is. To be on, it, it has that 30 day on stockpile. Okay. There, it has to be taken care of. Okay. So we could call them on that. Okay. All right. I second it. All those in favor? Okay. We have a one year extension. Uh, 
sorry, can I just, can I ask one more question? Sure. I heard somewhere in the conversation over this week that you can only have two extensions. So if the house is not built in one year, I'm out of luck? I don't know, that's not in our bylaw that we can only give. I don't, I don't know anything about a limit to extensions. Um, I don't, I don't. That could be for a different per. It's possible that's for a different permit. I don't think I that's don't. a conservation risk. I don't think that you heard that from conservation. Oh, okay. So I, I can't help okay. you with anything else there. Okay. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Two okay. more, please. Uh, yeah, if, if you All right, moving on. Keep them with uh, your file. We have the ANRAD 270-0658 Low Meadow off of Arcadia Avenue, map 14, lot 15, Haskell. And they are not here tonight. Um, we did have some issues the last meeting um, where we felt that the riverfront area was not extended to the end of the property. Um, Chuck and I took a, a site visit Tuesday afternoon and from the end of um, the last riverfront flag the the course of the stream actually goes I forget which direction but it goes away west. west and it goes about 25 25 feet this way and then we took a measurement off of 1a and it actually kind of meanders like this and this was 85 feet so that the riverfront area as you know extends 200 feet from mean annual high water which would be out there and we can ask um, Norse environmental to get that onto a plan Do you, are we giving them um, our measurements that's what you want on the plan they want to go out and actually take and, and put flags at the riverfront area and then and do um, survey off of that, that would be fine. I don't. They indicated that they didn't want to do that and they'll right. accept what the commission has decided on flag location. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Does the, I, I, I could be wrong, but I thought they had indicated that flags in those directions weren't gonna make a difference to them. Is, do we see that otherwise? Uh, I guess like the I guess the problem I have with this, okay, yeah. is that it just doesn't. This is the end of the project, right? Mm -hmm. It goes out like this. You still have riverfront area. It. It, okay. it, it might. I'm sorry. I, I see. I see what you're saying. I don't know. They have to make that measurement. I, we didn't do the measurement yet. So from RF one. It's 25 feet out this way, and then mm -hmm. from. 1A, it's 85 feet. What flag number do you have? Do you want to draw it on the board so uh, yeah. everyone can see? Do you have Do you have the plan? I do. Well, good man. So you said 25 feet. 25 feet out this way. And then 85 feet this way. And the stream basically kind of goes like that. So we're concerned about that because of the riverfront area? We just want to be accurate. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's all. Um, because, you know, we, we had this discussion at, at one point with another ANRAD, I believe, where we said that the ANRAD will actually list the flag. So if, if we felt that the line didn't continue as far as it needed, we were still, we would still be covered when it came to that point. They f they're flagging the locations that they feel that they need uh, you know, um, we just weren't, I just <coughs> wasn't comfortable the last yep. time. I, I mean, I knew it was out there, I just didn't. You know, even, so by my sketching on this plan, even with those flags you mentioned, mm -hmm. the, the RF1 flag really dominates the definition of the inner riparian buffer zone, of that 100-foot buffer. So really, I mean, uh, those later flags are have a hundred foot that's closer to the, that's, 
that's headed towards the wetlands. What you're saying is that this. That's the defining. Yeah. Okay. That's more RF1 you'd based on what you're saying. You'd end up with some, I don't defining. want to draw a new plan, but you'd end up with almost an arc that bounces in and then bounces back out well, again from that. It would it would go in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It okay, would go so in, so it wouldn't. So perpendicular to the river. So we. From RF1. halfway through the word building more near the D <coughs> yeah right here. yeah it go, kind of goes out like this so that what I'm saying so, is the so what you're foot. saying is that this inner that arc yeah, is more okay. determined by that flag right, right there okay. no. right not it's it's really yeah. And that's not fine. determined by those further. And that's fine. Right. I apologize to everybody for no, at least another, you know. <laughs> another meeting, but I didn't feel comfortable with it. No, I, I mean, uh, that's part of why we continued this is to make sure, uh, you know, I think we've had some <coughs> questions about those flags. So, so it's yep. worth noting, uh, you know, again, I, I just think to be cons consistent with what we've d been doing recently, uh, I think we had the conversation of, well, they're allowed to go to their limit. The the truck in our in the actual let's say it wrong, but the the ANRAD or conditions or whatever the initials are the ORAD. Ini ORAD. ORAD. Thank you. Area yeah, the order of resource area delineation. We actually list the flags. We do, and we can't say what flags you're talking about. I don't think we didn't put correct. any flags. You didn't up. put any flags. Up. Correct. So those were not those points. I mean, we you could mention those locations but they are really negligible they don't have an impact on the resource the buffer zone all right so the jurisdictional area if you um, told me what flag and the distance I remember it was 25 and something 85. Else. so what's what off what flag was the 25 25 feet off RF1. RF1. Right and 85 feet off of A1. Off of A1. Which is a wetland edge. Was that the last of the matters you were right. wrapping up for this project? Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. So with uh, that. Any, so any comments, questions from the public? First, I'm sorry, 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 i am sorry 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 i am s
and the edge of the wetlands, which are the A series flags. And it's tiny, tiny numbers and letters, but it's <coughs> the line that's closest to the slope. And are those set now by GPS or just set by what the flags were that were out there? They're set by this plan. By this plan. Yeah, I think I think Mr. Mullen asked for GPS data, um, and or was that a different permit? I'm no, sorry. Just, I'm just been asking. We had discussed, we we had discussed <laughs> using whatever yeah. GPS device you guys had to yeah. to look um, at the settings. J Jamie's comment. I, I don't want to speak for him, but I, I what my recollection is is that. We want to start asking for this just in general right. on projects. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, right. Yeah. I don't. I don't think um, in in our history we have accepted plans like this without GPS data. I think we're just trying to. These make have it been surveyed on, by a registered surveyor too. We're just trying to make it an ongoing additional data request as part of what we ask for. If there were any missing flags, you could go back out and recreate exactly where those were with the GPS coordinates. And I think that's kind of where Jamie was going with that. Well, well, not just we, but I mean, not just the, so <laughs> right now they have the coordinates. So it wouldn't, they can always go back and recreate those locations. The, the idea would be that we could also have the ability to go out there with a GPS. Right, unit I think that sounds like a great idea. Just, yeah. just trying to understand if that was part of the requirement that you were trying to proceed forward with or? It's, it's not a requirement that we've generally given applicants um, it's something that we've discussed as a commission that we should be just asking for and as general practice moving forward. Um, but yeah, I, I think my personal opinion, we haven't asked anybody for this yet. Right. I, I think we'd have to, similar. Develop, we'd have to give people some forewarning that yeah. before they develop Absolutely. the plans, they need to give uh, us Any other yeah. questions yeah. from the public? Yes, sir. Your name? Uh, yep, Dave Rauchy, uh, 117 Arcadia. Uh, what flags <coughs> were, were moved? Because I know you mentioned at the last meeting you were, you were planning on going out to move the flags. No, they, they had they been moved, moved previously, hadn't they? Chuck? Yes. So, so it was this area right here for the flags. It, it kind of went in this direction, but yeah. we, we had it come down here. So you moved That was the most of, most of the movement was in this area. So it's like a, a a eight, seven, eight, nine, somewhere around that area. Yeah, I think that's what it was. Seven, eight, nine. Okay. So we're right. So that's moved. Four so what four does four that division. then in turn do the other line so the other line set on the A line, does that move mm -hmm. back in here? Like from one through eight? Right? Does that determine? So does what line? Does this well, line move? Yes. yes. No, these these yeah. just that flag flag is independent, independent of each other, and the lines connected to them, yeah. okay. which creates that buffer zone line and this hundred. And the revisions five. were done March thirty first. They're, they're on the plan. There's um revisions section kind of down the bottom towards the left of the stamp. Okay. Revision oh. number one. I don't even know if you see it in the chart. I do. Thank you. Okay. Okay. I'm always looking. No, I, I, I'm so, always looking to. No, I appreciate that. Yeah. I do. Yeah. Um, I, I don't even know what questions to ask, but but so now the measurement that you said on the R1, I've seen that out in the river. That you agree with. Mm -hmm. okay. So with all that's said and done, is there any, I know when uh, Mr. Erickson was here, he was talking about plants and soil and so forth. Is that any any indication in this equation for any of this lines or any of the, that for we're the talking about? For the wetland lines, yep. it's, it's plants, yep. hydric soils versus upland soils, and presence of hydrology. Okay. And then for the R series, it's riverfront, and that's mean annual high water. Okay. And we've so determined that this particular area right here is fine with the uh, vegetation and the soil. And, yes. and if I may jump in just for a second, just to explain, the reason the riverfront is in this situation is particularly challenging to draw that line mm -hmm. is you you know that backyard. Mm -hmm. I think you live near there. I do. Um, it's, it, it doesn't look like your typical defined channel. Right. Right? Correct. So, so 
you know, you can imagine the challenge it is to find the edge of the riverbank yes. there. So that's why we had so many visits and that's why we're satisfied with where the flags are now. Okay, and one more question if I may. And then there was, I think Mike was talking about the continuation of the line. It kind of stops on this map, or does it stop like somewhere around 14A? And then there's no right. continuation till down on um, right. um, Idle Drive or B6. Right. Idle Dev, excuse me. Yep. Right. So that that that's just a. That work, they the the, the applicant, applicant that I think is what the the big gap on yes. the plan. Yes, please. The applicant um, uh, chose not to fill in that data because oh. the the setbacks from whatever lines would be drawn there have very, very little impact on the work areas he was concerned about. Okay. So he just didn't do the work because there was not any value in him. You know what I mean? He wasn't going to get anything out of it. Okay. This, the state of the property. this ANRAD will only verify the, the actual flag locations that are on here and, and nothing, it, it, nothing in between there. So if they want to do the other part they left off, they'll have to come back and do another handwrap? Yeah. Well, it, it, it might not be an answer. They could come back with, with a plan. For and a notice of intent. For a notice of, and flag those locations, but they would have to flag those locations if. Right. If so they could go through that process, what you're doing for that portion, they'd have to do it for the other portion if they decided to put a driveway or build, try to build something. Right, but there's, right. But there's three properties between those flags and the street. Mm -hmm. So. Right. Okay. Let's stop. Um, anyway. Um, do I hear a motion? I move we issue uh, an ORAD for Low Meadow. I'll second. All those in favor? Those abstained? All right. Okay. Moving on. Thank you, everyone. Moving on. 720 Ann Rad for 116 Van Norden Road. And we were... Um, Concerned about, I think the D series. E. D. E. 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 B is in. No. E. e is in Al Edward. E. And um, the applicant was looking to. Oh, there you are. The applicant was looking for permission to get on the e, e series, which is on private property, and that just came in the other day. So uh, we haven't had a chance to. Uh, do a site visit, so we are going to continue that until the next meeting. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yes. And you're okay with that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. What? Do we need oh. a motion to continue? Just, yeah, well, so yeah, do we need a motion to continue? And, and do yes. we have? I, I don't think we do because it's not a hearing. Okay. <coughs> we'll just have it on the agenda next time. Okay. It's okay, okay with yeah. the No, no, it is a hearing. And Anne oh, it is, is, a is a hearing. Oh, okay. Yeah. I move we continue the Anne to the next meeting. Then we, we're supposed to read that sheet then. No, no, not for notice of intent. No. For an Anne Rad. Anne Rad. No. We, we usually read it all the time, yeah. but. Um, if it's a hearing, we read the sheet. If it's not a hearing, we don't read the sheet. I didn't think it was a hearing, but I would defer to. Uh, you're talking about this sheet. So, yeah. The public hearing is now. Well, I, I mean, if we're continuing it, we don't have to read it. But I'm just saying, in general, if it is a hearing. I, I, I didn't think an ANRAD sorry, was a hearing. You know what? We need to move on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we can talk about this later at the end of the meeting. Sorry. Um, so I made a motion to continue, if just to even formalize right. the continuing it. Uh, I'll Second. Those in favor? Thank you. <coughs> I don't know. Now I can read 730, notice of intent, 270-0662. Um, is um, now opened and being conducted concurrently under the authority of the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act, Massachusetts General Law 131, section 40 as amended in the Reading General Bylaw, section 7.1. 
hearing will be conducted in the following manner. The applicant will present the proposal. The commissioner will receive reports from its administrators. Other town departments. The commissioner will address questions and comments to the applicant, and the public will be given the opportunity to ask questions. And um, if you do, please uh, direct the questions to the chair and give your name and address before your comments and sign in in the back of the room. And um, at this time, with the members of the commission, um, please introduce, introduce themselves, starting on my right. Jamie Rogers, Board of Supervisors. Amy Jamie Rebecca Longley, Chair. Anika Scanlon, Vice Chair. Michael Flynn. Harry Curtis. Chuck Taroni, Conservation Administrator. And that comes from me, Bill Manuel, Wetland Engineering Manager. And I'm here on behalf of GG Real Estate Development LLC. And there is an existing duplex home at 154 Green Street, and they'd like to tear that down and put a new duplex home up. Um, some of you on the commission may remember that I was in front of you to do this lot over here. Uh, I think this is 160 Green, I can't remember. Uh, there were wetlands, remember, I flagged, I think I started just about here, and we flagged wetlands across the back of that lot, kind of extended up into their, their lawn. Uh, lo and behold, uh, my clients come and they want to do this lot, and so I extended the, the wetland boundary to where it would affect the buffer zone, the no disturb zones, and the, the no build zones of this parcel. And what happens is, for those of you that were out there yesterday, you see that I just continued this line and then it turns away and goes uh, directly to the north. So really, I, I only needed about four flags to define the buffer zone and the, the sub zones on this particular parcel. So here, here are the flags. Um, they basically go right along the property line and this is the 25-foot zone of natural vegetation and this is the 35-foot no structure zone and this is the 100-foot buffer zone. So the proposed duplex is, is squarely right in there. Um, you see the existing tree line that's on the lot right now. There's everything out here on the lot is a lawn area or driveway or the structure. And there's kind of some, some uh, mature trees and some brushy stuff back here. And for the most part, uh, this plan respects that existing tree line. It certainly respects your 25-foot zone of natural vegetation and it's all structures are out of the uh, no structure zone. You can see the limit of grading uh, comes right up to really the 35-foot line. It goes a little bit past it, but certainly outside the 25-foot line. Uh, we have a driveway side by side. There happens to be a utility pole right there in the middle. So that's why this sort of little grassy separation is there. To just put some space around that utility pole. And then we uh, handle our uh, increase in rate of runoff and increase in volume by these two infiltration pits. Uh, the engineer had done a soil testing in the presence of a city representative in a pretty sandy soil with uh, reasonable perk rates. And this, he's got two infiltration systems. There was a stormwater report that was submitted with the notice of intent and it documented that we actually decreased the uh, rate of runoff for the uh, post-development conditions by using those two infiltration areas. So it's a fairly clean application in its buffer zone, but it's a redevelopment of the existing lot and we are staying outside all your subzones. Okay, I have, um, we have a site visit, did you guys, um, See that on the yeah, yeah, we did too. And um, when we were looking at the color pack infiltration systems, this the A, the one at the A, which is off to the east. Um, did you you encountered groundwater at 39 inches? Right, it's on the plan. He'll actually have that now if you want me to put it up. Want to put it up? Yes, the answer is yes. When we we were out yesterday um, with the owner, and we were looking at the plan, 
hands, we couldn't figure out, we could figure out the top part, the low part, but we couldn't figure out the chamber in between. We didn't have a, have a, a uh, height to that. So what's the height between the top and the bottom, and where does the bottom come into that 39 inches? Um, there is a detail on sheet C3. Uh, the height of the call text are looks like about uh, 12 inches. And there is a, a table on sheet C2 that tells you the inverse of each of the two individual systems. So system A, it s calls out the seasonal high water table as elevation 190.35. The bottom of the system, or the bottom of the chamber is 192.5. Um. So it, so it, it will sit in the seasonal high water table. Okay. Mm. No, it's above the water table. Okay. One ninety two point five versus one ninety. Yep. And Rebecca, I had the same question. Just for your information, I did a little search for uh, if you see on C two the schematic for the storm water infiltration systems one and two. There's a there's an arrow pointing to that whole figure that says Caltech 125 or equal. So I, I did a quick search of Caltech 125, and from a, from a spec, I mean, literally, I spent two or three minutes on this, not very long at all, but from a spec on Caltech 125, they, the spec says 18 inch high device height. And, that's, um, that's and I think says. those are, is that what that says? Um, and, and I think, don't those have like open bottoms? They do. I think they're just like almost storage hoods, underground storage hoods with the crushed stone underneath. And the, yeah. Um, and what, uh, so that so elevation so will that be is above 35. Will that be above grade then? No, if it's at one, no. it 193.6? So 18 inch minimum cover, it looks like. No, because there's the fill. No, because you can see the proposed grading around proposed it. Grading, it's about right. fill in on top of it. 96 over it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think, I think what we're trying to determine is uh, do you have two feet or about three inches less than two feet of separation? Yeah, a little bit less than two feet. Is there any but way you could just. It's water, it's clean water, so. But it looks like there's an opportunity just to move it up a bit, and you would be, you would have your two feet. Move it up. Towards, towards the, the house, house. Closer to the, to the house. Oh, sure. Yeah. And, and yeah. when you look as at As long the as you don't mind, you see where it's, it's positioned directly over that test pit. As long as you don't mind that, we're going to move it a little bit off dead center of that test pit. Sure, that's fine. What was the, um, well, I was going to say from test pit, a to test pit B. Um, the ground, I, the, the, the property a lot slopes of the, up. A lot, of, a lot of the soils, well, I'm, I was trying to see, you know, was there a big subsurface geologic change between test pits A and B, and it wasn't a very big one. Um, no, they call it loamy sand, loamy sand. Um, Welcome to Coarse England. sand and, and gravel, yeah, so it's, <laughs> it's outwash soils. Chuck, yep. w when you asked him to move it up gradient towards the house, more. yeah, yeah, are you are you looking for more cover? Or are you looking? I'm looking for, for that two feet of separation between seasonal high groundwater and the bottom of the chamber. So you're increasing the invert. Mm -hmm. So it'll still have the 18 inches of cover over it. it just be it'll be set a little bit higher above groundwater. Right. So instead of Instead of 21 inches, yeah, it'll be like 21, yeah. 30 inches or 26 inches. Yeah, at least 24, right. Um, I had a couple questions. Uh, um, and forgive me for uh, not knowing 
certain things on the plan. A couple of these are just points of information. Um, along the property line for this on C2, it says hub set. Yep. What's hub set? Uh, a hub is a just sort a of a wedge of wood about this high and they just a survey, a survey mark. marker. Yeah. Okay. And it's okay. set. I was thinking, hub set, that's okay. So, um, and that utility line, that's labeled TEC uh, in between the two driveways. Is just TEC. Yeah, what? Remind me what that's? Telephone TEC. electric cable. Okay, okay. Um, I, I have another question about um, the tree, existing tree to be removed. Right. Plant says it's an elm. Label says it's a maple. Yeah, it's an elm. It's an elm. Okay. Um, um, another question I have is I'm going to just bop around and get shoot my questions out. Um, that, that elm was pretty. Pretty dead. Pretty dead, yeah. <laughs> We saw uh, not much bark way up high. Yeah, they, they get a certain <coughs> height, and then the, the Dutch elm disease attacks it. It didn't look good. Yeah. Um, it's dead. If I can jump back. Um, so mm -hmm. there are two proposed decks off the back, uh, but no access stairs right. proposed. So that's come back to bite us when we just kind of find out after it's been built. Like, oh, yeah, the stairs are here. Yep. Any idea of where I'd like I'd like to kind of nail down any idea where you want the stairs where those the stairs are going to go in what direction like and either north is going to be yeah right there yeah like right. yeah. off mm -hmm. like that no no towards the front towards the front like towards yeah. The yeah 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 towards the front if it can you pop the second sheet up C two Second sheet, there we are. I'll try going up to the arrow down. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Like that. Okay. Okay. Because when the project's all said and done, that ends up being additional structure. Right. I just wanted to know what was going on with that. Um, How would you like to handle that? Would you like to note it that there will be steps coming off the deck? Or? They should be shown on the plan. Yeah, right. um, uh, yeah something sketched on. And, and if you're going to have a concrete pad at the base of the stairs, that should be on there too. Yeah. Um, kind of in line with that type of, uh, of a feature. That's, what? An, that's an increase of uh, a little bit of impervious surface. Right. I'm sure that you've got access. Uh, we have absolutely access, yeah. yes. Um, another question I had was uh, bulkhead locations. Uh, I don't believe there's going to be bulkheads. Uh, you're going to drive in the, the garage, right? Yeah. You're going to go yeah. up. Mm -hmm. yeah. So they might be basement walkouts or something? or No. No basement? Okay. The garage is going to be the basement. Yeah, the garage oh, is okay. below grade, right? Uh, no. Garage should be. Uh, That's a grade elevation. Not really, 197.4 versus 198. No, just about at grade. And there, there's no uh, egress from the garage to the north, to the back of the house. You won't right? be able to walk out of the garage into the backyard, will you? I don't think, because the grade behind the house is 199, so that's two feet above the garage slab. Because again, if there's going to be uh, a door in the back and right, like a basement patio or, or a basement patio, that needs to be on the plans also. But if you if you don't have a door back there, then you're good. Yeah, we'll make sure that we get all those little details. It's, it's little details, but sometimes it adds up. Yep. And it becomes a surprise after the bill. Bills. In, in Green Street, what's the gray? And what's the gray thing? The uh, I think that's what their limit of uh, work for the utility connection is going to okay. be. Okay. All right. Gotcha. Um, small question. Do you, do you add an approximate sauna tube diameter? These going to be big feet for the deck post. 
and these are just regular 12 yeah, inch or 12 inch, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and I think I'm, well, I'm almost You have done. to use those elephant foot things now. You can't just put in a silent tube. Oh, to be up to current code? What if that's the probably to whatever is. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's, they'll probably do that through building, although we have approved. Sometimes that takes up some additional uh, footprint. It should be four feet. The bottom of it's going to be four feet below grade. Um, let's see. Did I have something else? Um, I, I had one I noticed when I was out there, um, you know, and, and I know this is a, a new owner, but I noticed some trash in the, the back corner. I don't, I don't know if it was in the the wetland area, but definitely the uh, no disturb zone. Is there what any kind plan? of trash? I, I was broken. It was a, it was and plastic. that leads me to another It was point. a plastic horse. The leg was off. There was just a little piece, but then off to that side, there was a whole bunch of uh, brush, but that wasn't on um, your property. Right. We had talked and, about and that. And that reminds me of, of something I need to point out. Chuck, can you just scroll down a little bit? Th there is a an old concrete slab that nobody knows what it's there for. It, it probably is a foundation to an old shed, mm -hmm. and we want to clean that out. We want to remove it. So we did see that. Yeah. We're just, you know, when we have the excavator on site, we'll just, you know, knuckle under the slab and, and flip it over. If there's something, if, if it's a slab covering something, we'll fill it in. Uh, but we just want to get it out of there and we'll just you know, top dress it with loam and seed it and leave it alone. Uh, could you just make sure the erosion protection are beyond that? Uh, because I forget how big that was, but I, I mean, it, it wasn't anything gigantic, but it yeah. will leave the area. Or yeah, temporary. Why don't we just temporary erosion. Yeah, temporary why don't we just erosion. Just put a mulch sock yeah. right around there. Yeah, like perfect. That. Yeah. That would be that would be the best. Yeah. Thing. Didn't you have a question on mulch sock? Or I was just uh, no, I was just going to. Um, I saw that you chose a nine-inch diameter um, silk sack, um, and I think I think the recommended diameter for this situation is somewhere between eight and twelve inch. So I think. You don't need silt sack, do you? Silt sock. You put it in the silt sock erosion control. You're not going to be doing any dewatering, are you? No, I, I think no, she's, like there's various terms for the mulch socks. Mulch socks. Oh, okay. Socks. So you're silt talking socks. about the erosion barrier, erosion barrier. not a yeah. silt. Yeah, so you would be required to put on the down gradient side a silt sack in the storm drain and um, the mulch sock, if you want to use that, it has to be 12 inch. I, yeah, I just wanted to bring the commission's attention to the fact that when that, that slab is removed, there's a tree mm -hmm. right there that's probably going to come down when it's removed. Probably it might right be able to be saved. I think it goes right through it. Yeah, doesn't it goes it? right through it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, okay. There's there's the possibility what, what kind of, of trees. It's probably a uh, maple. Yeah. Like that. Bigger. Uh, no, no, not, no, 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 no. I know it was smaller. There were sugar maples that were out there. Was, well, there was yeah, there was one sort of. There's one there's right kind of growing to it under too. it. Yeah, that's the one. Oh, I that's think the one next to it could you be. Know, safe. If we can bust the slab and work around it, that's what we want to do. Mm -hmm. So if they if they took that tree out, however, would we be looking for as a replacement? I I would like to see um, a replacement tree. My sentiment on that. I would yeah. rather see that foundation out and take the risk on the tree mm -hmm. than than worry about a replacement. You know, I, I, yeah, and we'll, I can't we'll remember. break it up and, and work around it. Okay. It's not going through the concrete. It's going next to it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so, so at this point, just to be clear, the, the 
proposed um, vegetation up to the existing tree line is just to reinstate the, the, the grass lawn as yep. is. I know you folks had some issues about flag 100, 101 at the concert, but... Um, I don't think it matters, honestly. Just well, actually, it, I think it was in the right... Did, did it look okay to you guys? I mean, it was it was pretty close, and I don't think it matters. Chuck, do you want to talk about the culvert? Yeah, I, uh, when a culvert's more than 200 foot long, the resource area starts from the end of the culvert yeah, and okay. extends out in an arc, and I think placing them directly above That's the right. end of the culvert is correct. Right. Okay. I just wanted to yep. clarify that. Yeah, I just wanted to get your opinion first, so I'll find out. Um, you mentioned dewatering. Yeah, I don't think you're going to be doing it anymore. I, think you will. Okay. I, th I still think we, we need an updated plan with um, all the things that we have talked about this evening. Mm -hmm. so Stairs, uh, access, bulkhead. Yep. Yep. Stairs, bulkhead, 12-inch mold stock, uh, temporary mold stock around that slab, um, silt sack in the storm drain, and we're going to adjust the, the uh, system A. Right. Do I hear a motion to continue? I move we continue to Sorry. remain second then. <laughs> All those in favor? What was that date? Oh, oh wait a minute. 25th. Wait a minute. I'm sorry. I'm still Did anybody public? have any questions from the public? Hearing none. <laughs> 25th. 25th? 25th. Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. All right. And we have a continuation of Hearing for DEP 270-06611 one General Way, Map 41, Lot 1, Danis, is now open and being conducted concurrently under the authority of the Mass Wetlands Protection Act, Chapter General, Mass General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40, as amended in the Reading General Bylaws, Section 7.1. Hearing is conducted in the following manner. Applicant presents proposal. Commission will receive reports. From the administrator, advisors, and the commission will address questions and comments to the applicant, and the public will then be given the opportunity to ask questions. Uh, and at this time, would members of the commission please introduce themselves, starting on my left. Uh, Chuck Taroni, Conservation Administrator. Harry Curtis. Michael Flynn. Danica Scanlon, Vice Chair. Rebecca Long, the Chair. Jamie Mullen. Jamie Shikasani. This started out as a pretty large um, 
wetland restoration plan this has since devolved into maintenance activity to maintain the integrity of an existing bank and dike and to clean out an existing stormwater detention basin. The only other aspect of this that is of any interest to the regular, regulatory community will be uh, some restoration work over here at Area 5 where there's a good sized stand of Phragmites growing in and around a, uh, an erstwhile wetland reputation area. Reputation area is doing fine in there, uh, but the Phragmites will take it over and just choke out the, uh, the shrubs that are in there. It comes down really to a judgment call where the uh, rip the whole blasted thing out, solarize it for a year or so, glyphosate, however you get rid of it and then start again with a replication area or whether you work in a round and carefully dose each fragmite sample with glyphosate. Go back in six months and do it again. Go back the next year and do it again. One way or another, that small an area of fragmite isn't real hard to manage. The trick, of course, is going to be keeping the frag from coming back in somewhere else next year, blowing in from the abundant source of it's an urban site. There's really, there's really little you can do over the long term. But I do agree, you know, it's a mitigation area. You just issued a certificate of compliance for it a few years ago. And geez, it ought to look like a mitigation area. So that's that's number five. That's the last item on our list. And it was kind of a, over the course of the last year, um, we kind of brought that back in a couple of times. We're perfectly amenable to getting rid of it. Fire hazard, frag blocks, lines of sight. This is a tough place to get in and out of. We'll do it. And we'll do it by whatever means are most efficient and expedient based on whoever is doing the work. If, if we hire a landscaper who would, would be better qualified to just come there in there and mow it for a year, then we'll give you an amendment with a mowing protocol. The plan right now, you'll see the last page of my narrative. There's a protocol for the application of glyphosate by dam to each stem. It's quick, it's efficient. You come in every six months to mow, and when you're mowing, somebody goes over there with a rubber glove and a paper towel soaked in it, ground up, and pats the frag. How does that, um, with the plumes and the seeds and the plumes, how does that not spread? Yeah, cut them off. So they're going to go in and cut those off Absolutely. first? Absolutely. You go in and you hand cut it with a pair of shears, then you truck it away somewhere outside of Redding's jurisdiction, certainly out of a wetland. And then you mow it and then you, uh, and you dab it. it. periodically. Yeah. Yeah, little shoots really don't like being glyphosated. So, so, John, when, when they do that, um, are they so no, you just typically, keep mowing it? Yeah, typically you want to come in when you're first mowing in the spring. Yep. When you first come into the site and mow everything. And you then, mow that. And then for those frag lines, you put the glyphosate And then you, on. Then you touch each one yep. delicately and gently. And come back sometime in the fall and do it again. Uh, this is not, this replication area is not an area that is regularly mowed. It isn't in a lawn. It isn't on a level grade. So somebody's going to have to go down there with a weed whacker smack the frag, and then after they've smacked the frag, while it's nice and soft and tender, just simply pat it on its little head and say goodbye. Works good. I did it myself when I moved into my house in the I got no frag on my house. Uh, I can go through each one of these areas if you like. Uh, there's big dark letters on the plan. And the only thing I would call your attention to is that we, uh, we intend to plant wildflower seed mix, not plant it. Other than that, um, this tells you what it is we're doing. The colored up version here is uh, it's just highlighted to show that there is drainage coming in here from several different directions to the detention basin, and that there is a small independent drainage system part way down General Way, goes into a manhole and discharges to a swale, which is presently being casually mowed, but there are sensitive fern and some cattails growing in that swale. I would say leave the protocol as it is. It's not really a functional wetland. It's just a damp swale that receives the drainage. Ultimately, that swale discharges, of course, to the brook. 
In section one, um, when we look, looked at that um, several months ago, Jamie was there. Um, there were, um, I would say, uh, birch trees. Set. Uh, they weren't really big. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you plan on taking those up? The plan there is because there's such a tangled mess of multi-floor rows and honeysuckle. Again, it's, it's mm -hmm. like with the Phragmites. It'd probably be easier to cut everything down and start over again. Right. Yeah, I mean, there are some specimen trees out there that if somebody said, oh, you know, it would be nice to save this, why not? I know, I know you guys planted that a long time ago. Yeah. You don't mind taking that stuff. Yeah, it did succeed. Yeah. And a wildflower meadow is a lot easier to maintain. Mm -hmm. um, Speaking of maintenance, is there a maintenance plan? The only maintenance plan I know of out here, other than the, uh, the protocol for the drainage structure, that's, that's got a uh, framework for maintenance and that survived the certificate of compliance. But everything else out here, it's just landscaping. It's mowed where it can be mowed. What we ran into trouble with was there was a line of demarcation out here, a boundary. Good Lord, every 25 feet, I think, there's a concrete bound sticking out of the ground. And a, a succession of landscaping contractors were put to the fear of God that if they went past those bounds, they'd be shot down by environmental I, I would suggest that we... So we don't want to do that. That we include in the order of conditions a maintenance plan that would be the one that Chuck drafted or that the applicant submits and we review and include in the order of conditions. Yeah. And that would include what could, what couldn't be cut, and also the maintenance of that four bay, mm -hmm. specifying the the, um, the interval for how often it will be cleaned, because I don't think it's ever been cleaned since it's been built. I don't know the answer to that. I do know that the, uh, the system was in place and in function when we got the certificate of compliance six years ago. I don't oh yeah, know it, it, initially it functioned amazingly well, but over time with lack of maintenance, it's, it's, it's uh, a small efficiency. Base. So, um, Chuck, would you rather draft it or have the applicant draft one and submit it? I would not rather draft it. I would rather review it. Okay, I, I, I would agree. agree. I, I agree no offense, Chuck, but I, I mean, I think we want to hear the interval for that four bay from. Right, right, I, I would agree. Typically, you inspect the four bay once a year. Okay, well, let, let, let's have it in writing. writing. Well, what I'm saying is, let me finish. Typically, you do it once a year, and you clean it when it needs cleaning. We're perfectly happy to work with whatever protocol was approved under the order of conditions issued for that four bay. It's still on the record. There are still binding conditions, and one of them is maintenance of the site. We don't need no new protocol for this. There is a protocol. Well, let's, let's resubmit it as part of this application, the sure. exact same one, if you're comfortable with it. I'll pull it from the record, and in that case, I mean, Chuck's already got it, basically. It's in uh, whatever file that, that system was designed under, and I'm sorry, I don't know what file number that is. No, I don't cite it here. But sure, we'll pull that spec from we, Chuck's we files and resubmit it. You got it? No, it's okay. That one's easy because we already have one, and I, I wouldn't alter it because I didn't design this system. But it add to that, if it's not already in there, how often you're going to cut things like those poplars, or how often you're going to mow that bank so we're not back here in six more years having to cut in more poplars and birch. And then once you once that's in that maintenance plan, we would expect you to to maintain it at that frequency. Why wildflower seed mix mow annually? Wildflower seed mix mow once annually. Plant wildflower seed mix. I always submit to you that we also intend to mow that annually. It's right there on the plan. We are going to plant a wildflower seed mix. I recommend that it be mowed in late October so that we don't cut down any bird nests or. See, I would just be comfortable if that's specified either in the maintenance plan or the order condition. Yeah. Or it's in the narrative and it's on the plan. We should have everything in the uh, operation maintenance plan because then that can be held out every time there's questions. Exactly. It's in the narrative on the plan. 
John, I'm not preparing the operation and maintenance plan. You're going to have to put it together. Who will prepare? I think, I think we keep going back and forth on well, this. Well, what plan. I'm saying, simply, okay. I'm trying to save the commission. <laughs> Thank the you. The operation and we'll maintenance plan is in <laughs> Please the save the commission. You already have it. We will take care of it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other questions for us, please? I, I'm sorry, John. Are you I'm done. Okay. Yeah. You're done? Thank you. Um, any comments or questions for the commission? I, I have a, a question about the vacuum dredge of the, the four bay basin. Uh, how do you how do you know when you're completed? You know, what, what's the process of getting back to the existing grade? Will you have a surveyor out there or will you have a stone down there, isn't it? Yeah, the liner. Oh. You stop when you're stuck liner. It's so it, okay, there's a liner right at the, the surface. There's no, there's no like, a lot of times you end up with like six inches of like pea stone above it or it, it just goes right to, you, got, you guys go right down to the liner. Right. Okay. Uh, and then similar for the, the repair graded stone, this erosion area, I know this is one that we kind of noticed last time we were out there where we, it seemed like actually the, the erosion can, controls maybe were never removed at, at one time and, and and that's what was causing possibly a, a siltation block at that location or is that going to be in removed is that going to be graded in the basin or James this is, this is right, right along the bank of the brook there are yeah. old stakes with filter fabric still stapled to them that's yeah. some of the toughest filter fabric i've ever seen usually that stuff disintegrates in 20 minutes but this filter fabric is still out there you cut it at grade, you break off the stakes, done. So that will, the this new outlet will mm -hmm. now be lower than, than currently. Is that, there's going to be, like, I guess we say, you say repair grade. Well, grade. right right now the only problem yeah. with that, that stone apron out there is that there's erosion control sticking out of it. Okay. And that because the erosion control was sticking out of it, all the water went this way and took a few stones into the brook. Yeah. So we could literally reach down into the brook, pull the stones out, put them back into the hole they fell out of. I think we'll probably come in with some new stuff. Did, did I did I re recall that there's some buildup of sediment there? I there's guess that's a, what I'm looking for. There's a berm for. along where the silt fence yeah, was. Yes, so you, you would take it out. Uh, that's going to be excavated out, and so it's going to be brought down exactly. to a, a lower elevation. My intent here was to walk out there with the Hayes plan for the design of this and make it look like the design. Minus the erosion control, because you don't need erosion control if you're repairing an apron. So is, is the Hayes plan? Uh, Hayes plan's off record. It's the it one was that part was of the NOI. Okay. Back in. Back in the day. When was that? Two, five? Yeah, I know. At one six. point or another, I stuck it into a filing. Um, I just want to ask a question about, just to piggyback on that uh, graded stone erosion fan. Um, so I see there's a note on the plan, um, and this is in your circled area three, right? It's um, part of three. Part of three, and I'm looking in the letter under item three, um, and I'm I'm looking for maybe a little bit more specifics, a little bit more detail about about this repair, and I don't see the specifics. In, in area three? No, the repair three? of the graded stone erosion fan. Because you said kind of you said just now um, no erosion control will be there. Well, I assume that's after the repair has been done. I know where it is. It's, no, it's such a, such a minor repair that actually oh, the only erosion control involved is going to be repairing the notch and removing the old silt fence. There's no need okay, to put so it we're in really talking about a very small area. But what I'm going to propose, yeah, it's only 12 feet long. 12 feet by what? It's just a 12 foot long stone apron at the edge of the brook and there's a notch about a foot and a half wide at one end of it. The notch needs to be rebuilt and the silt fence needs to be removed. What I'll do is I will augment paragraph three to include reference to the old order of conditions, it's recording references, the Hayes plan. I'll give you a cut from the Hayes plan showing that area and essentially our intent is simply to restore the existing conditions. Same to the as original, same as the it original is the construction. Bay. Build it the way it was supposed to be built, minus the silt fence. Okay, I'd like to see that, thanks. Sure. Delta, paragraph three. Hey John, I had a question. Um, is, is the 
you think it's in, uh, advisable that you're there during some of this work? Well, I think it's advisable that somebody's there, but unless this work takes place before the 30th of June, it's not going to be yours truly. Okay, so when we're when we're working on the bank and we're taking care of the uh, fan pipe, the, we should have an environmental monitor or someone from your office to oversee the project. Let me introduce Kyle Lally. Nice to meet you. Kyle just came to work for us about a month and a half ago, and uh, he's aces with me. He's not taking over for me now, exactly, but uh, he's working out of the Danvers office. He'd be the guy. So yes to that. Yes. Unless I choke him in the next month. Let's hope that doesn't happen. <laughs> so we would, you know, in order to stay on top of that, Kyle, we would need a uh, schedule of when these things are taking place. Mm -hmm. And if the schedule changed, you should email it to me. And if not, you should call because you know, that's when be out there when that work is taking place. Probably only that work. Okay. Sure. And I presume that like any order I've ever seen, uh, you're going to say pre-construction site visit and people responsible. So that will all be in the notification. Yeah, 24 hour number and all that. Yeah. So should be real easy. This is this is maybe two days work. Ready to clean the uh, basin? Approve the reduced fee. I I never talked to you about this. We, I we got a check for the. If you're asking if we received that check, oh. yes, we did. Okay. Twenty eight or thirty eight. Twenty eight. <laughs> did we approve the reduced fee? Yeah, we did. We uh, approved the yeah. uh, reduced because fee we got the uh, because it was the only fee that applied to this project, along with what was it, the fee? Yeah, there. We went through the list and. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, it was a thousand dollars to jump into this project, right. and they're asking for a variance to waive that uh, fee. And so the twenty-eight fifty or whatever it, uh, the exact amount was is only for the work, which is located on the bank of the stream. And the rest was either maintenance or invasive removal. Um, and we don't typically don't charge for that. Right. Any other questions from the commission? Any questions from the public? Yes, sir. Uh, Tony Garazzo, 130 John Street. Uh, looking at the plan, I don't know if there is any plan to replant any trees that are removed in sections one and two specifically. Sections one and two. I don't think that you would be because I asked the question about birch trees. Um, and they're not mature birch trees, I don't think, in section one. And um, they are planning to cut those down. That's why I asked that question. And they want to maintain that and mow that on a you know regular basis so that it doesn't come back in because there's all kinds of invasive species there. So my thought is that they are not planting any trees. That's right. We, we will maintain a little cluster of landscaping trees up front with That's mulch. part of. We'll leave them. Yeah. I, I'm sure that was a different application. Um, yeah, there's a whole landscape area out there. Um, and they are, they will maintain that wildflower mix. And that's a low growing, uh, you know, 18 inch. For anybody, you know, for anybody who's concerned about screening from the left or right as a row of mature evergreens on the adjacent property right adjacent to this. They're 
they're still going to be there. Thank you. So uh, typically, I mean, uh, we haven't reviewed the order of conditions. Chuck, do you even have it at this point prepared? No. I don't have it prepared. No. Uh, so that's not typically what we do. Uh, uh, it's usually have the meeting first before you pay, prepare uh, prepare the order of conditions. Yeah. Yep. So no. we also have to read the order, final order of conditions for this notice of intent, which we just opened today. You know, and and so if, if I could just reflect, if we will send <coughs> the applicant a, a draft of that order of conditions, of the order of conditions, and if you don't have any questions, if you're comfortable with it, then you don't have to show up at the meeting or you're, you don't have to pay a consultant to show up at the meeting. We would just, uh, we might have some questions or changes to that draft order and same thing, review the maintenance plan and then we would just issue it. Yeah, we respectfully ask that you do get that and whatever we can do to facilitate and get this done. Yeah. It, it will be prepared for the next meeting and if it's close enough to what the commission comes up, we'd probably be able to, to sign it. And, and you'll send them a copy? And I'll send you a copy and John a copy and the commission a copy and that can all be done between the meetings. Great. Thank you. So we'll have to wait for the 10 day appeals period after that meeting. We're not starting anything tonight. Late I'm June. not sure, John. Yeah. Yeah. Late June. Yeah, because, I mean, what you're looking to add is a basic sentence saying that we're going to mow inspection weekly. That's the maintenance plan. We're going to stick with the original order for the cleaning of the retention pond and the floor bay. That's already Is there any approved. reason they couldn't go forward with the floor bay? Because that's routine maintenance and that's already conditions. Can you let them get going with that? Well, we don't have a document to sign. I, I what I'm saying is it's routine maintenance. Yeah. There's already well, right. an yeah. order on record. That's already on record. Yeah. Then we then we don't have to give you any approval for that. Uh, not for that, right. that's right. So that's if right. they can go forward with that, right. that's at least something they can so. be doing in the next okay. eight so weeks. Yeah. Is it 10 days from when we sign the order or where issue. we pass it? Issue. Because we issue. usually issue. date the order the different day we actually sign it. Not usually. It's the date of issue. lately. You have to hand it to the client. So you guys sign it and there's that date on it and then I issue it the next day. The next day or the and that's when the 10 days start. Yeah, but I can, I can issue it the day of the meeting, you know, just, but it couldn't be any sooner than that. Right. Once you follow the rules. Right. So, they're allowed to clean out the floor bay? That's what we that that We've actually uh, asked them previously to do it as part of the maintenance. Right. So, so they're required I'm to clean out the floor bay. Right. So I hear a motion to continue. So I'm going to continue to make. You already made Motion already made. Oh, already made. Second. You've so never been to Market Basket? <laughs> and you live in Reading? <laughs> what was the meeting I said? May, May, May 25th. 25th. May 25th. Thank you. That doesn't interfere with Memorial Day, right? <laughs> oh, wait, 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 when? It's Wednesday. I mean, Wednesday. Memorial Day is a Monday. Just making sure that. That adds, a, that adds another week, yeah. That, <laughs> yeah. That, yeah. Count that day. <laughs> I left you guys up there. So John, John made a great point. If you have an order of conditions with continuing conditions in it, <coughs> you, can you can do any of that stuff. Okay. Mm -hmm. Again, just as a thank you very much for your time, and this goes back, I expressed to some of you, we were always told, don't go near it, don't touch it, don't look at it. We had, yeah. you know, so thank well, you for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What is the barrier?
already agreed to that. I thought we yeah. No, it just came in. This is the first meeting since they sent in the stuff. What is the variance they need? They, well, they, the variance for the fees for the $1,000. Uh, so we did, the, I asked if we approved it. Everybody said well, we, we already did. approved it. I thought we it. did. I thought we sat here and we went through the list and said th these we are the did. ones we would approve that they should we did. submit for so that they could submit with the right number, right? Okay. I, I mean, I could be wrong. Yeah, if, if no, we I'll didn't. check the minutes. I think it was the in meeting in between that is the, the It was problem. a while ago. It, yeah. it was a while ago, I think. Yeah. Well, we, we've done this twice because it was the first time, first meeting, I mean, six, more than six months ago, over, almost a year ago now we did this. <coughs> but completely different. That was yes, way, yeah, that different. was for that was RDA. Different. And yeah, 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 yeah. Our, our different project. Yeah. So yeah. they had a different project, then they had an RDA, and then they had a notice of intent. So they did the RDA, force three times. Between the RDA and the notice of intent, we, when they weren't on the agenda, we talked about, we it. Talked about it and went through the list. Okay. And you think we approved it? I, I, yes. I, I can't you, you, Yes, sir. Mr. Vaughn, my notes do indicate a $2,800 fee from the okay. last meeting. Thank you. And that's what we have. <laughs> Thank you for keeping better records than us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> it's, one, it's the only note I have. I <laughs> Thank uh, you very much. Um, okay, so. We went through, um, we need a minor pl plan change for 53 Arcadia Avenue. And um, do we have a, anybody here for that? 53, all right. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I'm Eric Hagstrom, over 53 Arcadia Ave. I am here before you for three items. One is a reissuance of my original order of conditions from September 2013. Another is an uh, extension of that order, which is coming up um, this year in September for two years or to such date as you guys are comfortable with. And also on a minor modification of that thing. And I know that um, I saw a couple of you at the property and missed I'm sorry about that. And I can just walk you through it, or if you guys have questions, I'm happy to field them. I would appreciate it if you'd walk me through it. Sure. Yeah, I'd be happy to. So there are really five major changes to it. Uh, the first one, uh, in the original plan, we had a large deck off the back, which I had as roughly 32 feet by 16 feet. Um, and that extended off the proposed addition. That's now uh, a side deck, which is reduced to a 10 by 14 square foot. The additional um, work to the proposed back addition um, is the original plan called for a staggered 14 foot and then a, another two foot out bump out, so it's a 16 foot across off the, uh, the 50 feet of the back of the house there. Now it's gonna be just a standard 14 foot for reduction there. Um, the garage that we were going to have on the original plan, um, I'm not sure if you were able to make it out there, but it was going to be right next to the existing porch. And what we're doing now is we're actually moving it, um, I guess, in front of the porch. So the, uh, our, the actual building will be narrower and also towards the, the street, about five feet. Uh, so those are the overall reductions. I think there are two um, minor increases, which is a three-foot section of the farmer's porch, again, extending towards the street, although I will note that the entire property is in the riverfront area. Um, and we're including a bulkhead access on the side of the house, just as an additional means of egress out of the basement. And so this order of conditions was issued in 2013? That's correct. Has construction started? It has not. And what has been the delay? Sure. Has there been a? Well, I have a uh, family of six. I have four kids, and so uh, committing to living through a construction project was something that my wife and I had kind of gone back and forth for a while, and so we had thought, all right, well, let's see how the market in Reading, you know, is, and you know, obviously, kind of have unique housing needs and. 
four or five bedroom um, property to kind of be comfortable. So none of the houses on the market really worked for our needs. And then as the market kind of picked up steam, they became more and more expensive. So that, you know, now you're looking at somewhere close to a million dollars for, you know, a comparable house. So at this point, um, this is definitely the plan. I have construction plans in the works. Um, if the board saw fit to- Do you, do you have a contractor on board? He has called me today, telling me, call me as soon as I'm out of the meeting tomorrow. Uh, so we are ready to break ground immediately, financing set, contractor set, just need to pull the permits, but of course, you know, I'm coming before this board uh, for those modifications. So I'm only asking for the two years. I'm sorry to cut you off, just in case I needed it. I, I would, I'm sure that my wife will make sure it happens within a year. Uh, but if I needed the two, it would just spare me coming back here. But again, it's. So that permit expires in September of this year, right? Uh, the order of conditions. That's I mean, right. the order of conditions. Mm -hmm. And the reason that I'm asking for it to be reissued is because my property is governed by the land court in Massachusetts. It's registered land, and they will not accept filings that are over a year old. So that's the only administrative reason I'm asking for it to be uh, signed off on again. Madam Chair, I, I have no issues, comments, or questions. Other comments or questions? I move we approve the minor pine plan change and extend the um, order conditions for two years for um, 53 Arc uh, Arcadia Avenue. I'll second. All those in favor? No Thank you. Comments? Great application, <laughs> great explanation. <laughs> no, and then for anyone here. I'm just <laughs> acting as the public right now. That's why. Did we, are we gonna call this from anyone? Here. She's here. She's Katie. You missed it. You missed it. <laughs> oh boy. I will bring you up to speed after the meeting. Okay. No. This is right when she was booking Katie. Perfect. I have never. We extended it for a year. I think so. Oh, I got that. Can you see the extension? Oh, yeah. Is she the Thanks for coming in and waiting for all those Thank meetings. you, sir. No, no, no trouble at all. Thank you for your patience. I know that. Uh, you need to pen. You're a, oh, this, is, this is actually pretty good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're pretty happy that this isn't too bad. Okay, and we're trying to move along. Okay, let's keep that momentum. Yeah. Do you want me to just fall on the later and then you that stuff? Do you want to? Yeah. Yes. Oh, you're a Oh, yeah. Or red uh, pen. Today. Oh, oh, you're talking to the pen guy, right? I got it. Just sign it. Good. It's like this just is get this. it. Yeah. Just get it. Yeah. Oh, you're so good. I have another one to sign. Yep. This Spinning your wheels. I thought that. I thought yeah. that yeah. presentation yeah. last night was great. It will only take the extension, and you're all right with filing. I really appreciate that. I finally knew. Very thorough. She filed. I need to get from you, sir. And you want me to send it to you by certified mail, or you want to come in and get the mail? Did you guys read um, the order of conditions? So it's research. I did. So if you want to come up in some way at your convenience, we have a ticket, pick up Ben, and anyone will go and look at it. And she said she would watch, you know, for this time. I will bother Kim and Maureen sometime next week. Yes. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. I mean, how did that get, I don't understand that. We were asleep at the wheel. And there's no way to get that registered back again. Yeah. Oh yes, yes there is. Oh, but not no. I yes. mean, how would the commission? The commission Actually, we, we don't allows. have to, we don't have to get it registered. We don't if even. In our judgment, it meets the qualifications of a vernal pool, then it affords the protection of a vernal pool under our local right. bylaws. But not until the order of condition expires. Mm, which it did, but we renewed it apparently. Did we renew it? We did. Yeah. For a period of oh, twelve yes, months. Oh yes, we did for a year. So that to me, that's very sad, you know, that it's declassified. I mean, I didn't realize that. Yes. That's horrible. Yes. Because I talk to people on that street just And they this see week. salamanders. Yes, they yes. do. Yes. So this I is for the vegetation management. I don't understand Peels. that. Salamanders, that's their nest, but right. they live in the upland. Okay. 
So when the uplands develop, okay, let's go. Where do they? Yep. Where are they going? It's a good question. They're going into the vernal pool to to mate, to to lay their eggs, right? And then then they go back into the upland and they hang underneath logs, you know, nice moist mm -hmm. logs. But this is the last lot on the street, so perhaps they're just in that there, specific but, area. But that specific lot is now... I wouldn't think so. It's, 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 no, that's not it's happening. Blazing. It's like a desert. It's yeah, like a hard-packed desert. Because so. they, they cut all the big trees down. They, that's why they bury underneath like logs, like rotted logs. So do you think nice there logs. are none left? I mean, that's my concern. No, there might be some... I don't know. I don't I, know. I just I think that's so around, sad after talking around the area. on that street just this week. Um, 56 Cross Street. Mm -hmm. Um, yep. I received no comments. Um, Anika had some comments. <laughs> Did you read the order conditions for 56? Do you want me to hand them I to you, Chuck? That. It doesn't help anyone. Uh, <laughs> I just have comments on the findings on page one, that's all. And I can hand them to you. We have to get you a computer. <laughs> <laughs> No, the plan was changed. We have a new oh, plan. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, on um, page one, um, number four. It's just. Oh no, never mind. It was the. Uh, I think it's the uh, meeting minutes. Yeah, never mind. Sorry. No. Invasive vegetation on Cross Street, number four, page one, number four. It just says invasive. Kind of evasive. <laughs> Is that for the order of conditions or the minutes? It's for the order of oh. conditions. Mm -hmm. Page one, number four, invasive. Should be invasive species. Invasive, invasive, invasive vegetation. Plants or vegetation. Or vegetation. Yeah, I mean, it could be invasive. Aliens. They're, they're invasive. It could Crabs. Be the, uh, it could be. <laughs> Asian, could be Asian carp. Right? Yeah. Could be zebra mussels. Yes. Yeah. There we go. Yep. Rattlesnakes that cut off the island. <laughs> they're not invasive, they're native. Yeah. I've never seen any of that. Okay. So, could we sign that? Oh, yeah. yeah. Two, these two changes? Sure. Um, so, Anika, you want to go over your changes? I uh, gave them to you, so. It just says. Uh, boarding vegetated wetland. Um, so another where I, I just wrote wetland. So she wants to say bordering vegetated wetland. Uh, and some uh, corrections, and then a foundation above grade structure will be slab on grade, and that's just another. What you want to say? Yeah, to me that was an important point because mm -hmm. it um, meant that the foundation wasn't going to impact the water table, displace the water table in that area. No, good comments because I'd like, and also the site plan, I need to show what um, document that is on the plan. So that was. They're pretty minor. Yeah. All right. So we sign that one too. Okay. Yeah. And we have two other certificates of compliance. One is just from two of them are Mariano Drive mm -hmm. for a lot. So those last two, oh, yeah. two. I think so. The road, road. and road. lot two. Lot three and lot two. No, 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 no. no, no, no. no. Lot, lot three is continued. Yeah, that's the yellow that's house. The, the, the grass. Okay, so. gotcha. Erosion. Oh. So for Mariano, we're doing two lot road. two in the road work, road, which yeah. doesn't have a lot in it. So you're passing this around? I will pass Mariana right okay. now. All right. Do we sign anything yeah, for the cute. purple no, one? It's tiny one? though. Yes. For which? We already it did. Has to we be did. Added on yes. No, no, but it's no cute. we're doing it. Right. Oh, I'm sorry. For what? That's how the purple do. one? Right. Violets? You haven't talked? Yeah. 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 It didn't go around yet. Oh, okay. I've. 
Oh, yes, it did. Oh, I didn't Chuck, know that didn't it go around? around? I think it was an older yeah. woman that lived there. I didn't originally. have anything to What did we sign? You just <laughs> heard the... Yeah. We did a description of the clothes. 56 cross. As you're coming down, it's on the right. Yeah, and that wasn't prepared. So This is 56 cross right here. And then we did the, well, I guess I don't know what we did. But you didn't sign one for Keogh. Okay. Did he say so? What, 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 what did we sign? What did we sign before this? Tonight? Yes. It's in order. It's uh, 53 Arcadia. Arcadia. 53, 53 Arcadia. Arcadia. Okay. Oh, the extension. The, the, the ex Sorry, what you're confused about is there was an extension and he has sort of this uh, registered land, so he needed us to re-sign the original order of conditions with the s all the same dates, so we can go there with a fresh copy. Plus, he lost the original. Okay. So that's why that came around. All right. So there you go. That was oh, two. Oh, okay. Sorry. That's why. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we can sign Keolis. I have it? that ready, but Great. I haven't sent it around because we're still doing. Mariano? You said do the orders. Uh, right, sure. The compliance. And I'm a lefty. Okay. Here's the second one for Al. Lot Here we two. are on uh, lot two. Two lot two copies. Is that which lot is that, Amy? Uh, it should be on the front page. Did I? I don't see it. Six, seven, six, two, seven, eight, seven, eight, seven. This is this is lot two. That should be the road. Oh, okay. Six two seven is the road. This is lot two. While we're doing that, can we? Can I just tell you guys a little bit about Cedar Swamp? I had fun with the map, and I was because I was trying to understand. I thought it was in North Reading. Well, it is. Goes through North Reading. Starts in Tewksbury, goes to Saugus. So, the only part that goes through Reading, it, it, it's two thousand feet <laughs> long, and it's way off the road. It's right. Right. The, the Correct. Teeny right. corner. That's right. correct. Right. Okay. Correct. Yep. You're in the far northeast. How do you get there? Through the right of way through North Reading. So do you have to walk the power line for what's that, a mile you or two? To, yeah. If okay. you wanted to see it. But basically, what I, what I understand that to have been, was they had two 115 kV kilovolt lines there, and they were putting in for reliability issues, um, two. 345 kV, and what they were doing is you got to have so much distance between that and the 115 was here, so they remo they moved the 115 over and put the two 345s there back in 77. So is there a point at which we need to go look at it, or because I read something that they sent to Chuck, and I was are they Ch Chuck seemed to think that he would find rem back in the day. A actually, when I worked on transmission lines, when they construct them, they do cut things down and they do line them up on the side, you know, like logs. And back in the day, if you read the uh, note, didn't we get a notice of intent? Or the it was in the order conditions. They said, oh, we can dump, you know, some logs in the wetland and they will disintegrate naturally. So, yes, you might find something there, but... It's a long time ago. And the order, the order of conditions didn't cover that. They, the order of conditions told them they could, right? Right, right. But it was, yeah, it was yeah. approved. Yeah. Um, and they were, they used swamp maps um, if it was wet areas to get across to, to do the construction. Mm. Um, so do we have to do anything now with that one? Or? 
Are you, what are you looking for? Chuck? Did you look at the EIR? The E I the uh, environmental report. Yeah. Yeah. I went through that a bit. Yeah, I did as well. I didn't. I mean, the, you know, the big much. place that was Breakout Reservation because they go <laughs> right through that, and there was a lot of discussion with that, uh, as you can well imagine. So, but for our purposes, do we need to? S still are you looking for a certificate of compliance they're looking for a certificate they're looking for a sign off i received a call this week from dep and uh, conoco engineering which generally came up conoco engineering couldn't believe he had to nimble up his fingers and use them on his keyboard to type a narrative so he preferred to call <laughs> dep and had <laughs> sick them on me <laughs> to say why are we holding this thing up that was issued in in 1977 so um, he says, you know, he goes, I thought I would tell you what DEP does typically with um, water resistant issues of this old. And he said, they just issued them. And I said, well, we'd like to I'm know what we're signing. And there's an order of conditions on recorded. And I'm only asking them to write us a narrative and send us a plan. And I said, any Cracker Jack engineer can do that. And so we said, OK. But well, we don't have it yet. He called it. No, no, we did. I sent that out. They to sent something. They sent so did you see the aerial plan? photo. Aerial, yeah. There was an aerial with a little well, red line. But we did get something the guy denied yeah. he had. Sent it with the environmental report. Got the EIR. Oh, and I said, do you have any more information? He said, no. He was, was said, it no, I don't have anything. I don't I have a narrative. It. I don't have I mean, anything. It was literally just an aerial. Five minutes after you know, the, I got off the phone with DEP, that comes in. And I, 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 I don't understand that mentality. Yeah, it's right there. And so anyway, okay. They want us to sign and close out that old order number thirty nine, but we're actually on the DOA for two thousand sixteen death and the vegetation management plan for the purple lion, and I have that prepared. Okay. And that's what we're okay. on now. So I think we closed at the next meeting. Just to get us back into line, and it's that's our conditions. This is boilerplate, and the signature page is, um, and they're all relevant. It just says notify me when the work is done. Uh, no activity will be allowed in the wetlands, and um, I'm sure it works, shall conform to the description. So we're not doing the certificate of the compliance. For not yet, because it's down the list a little bit more. That's, what I, that's all I was saying. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it's going to come up on the list. I just wanted to okay. get back in order. There we go. That's Keyless. guy too. <laughs> That's a bad look. This is a long story behind these pens and since we're being recorded my wife might watch it someday I'm not going to say anything about it. <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> Is the um, purple line, purple line. Yep. Uh, uh, you know the Keolis, the spray vegetation the control? Oh, Remember yes, the pictures we looked at last time? That. Yes. Right. And we all know what those stones are underneath the railroad tracks. They're called ballast. Ballast. Oh, I always knew that. I know you would know, and Jamie probably knew all the time. I knew about it. Not gonna uh, hazard a guess. Yeah. Yeah. I thought the ballast was something <laughs> you threw off the ship. Threw <laughs> 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 off the ship. Well, you it can is. you can throw it off the ship when you take on more cargo. Right. Here, here the next one is uh, New England Power Company, and this is what we were just talking about: the Cedar Swamp northeast boundary. 
and I have prepared because I got the information I requested the certificate of compliance and you're satisfied with the information that you received I think we understand the project now and although no one did a site visit no I don't know that would be great as if I had a drone. <laughs> I, these are the days I wish I could borrow a drone from someone and just sit by the road and go like, <laughs> there was a drone here yesterday. Yeah. That would be great. I want to take my truck, go for a ride. <laughs> you read the water? Yeah. Yeah, I don't. And there was I'm not going to get to it till. Was that there was nothing with land time? either. No. I think we all gestured yeah. that we would go out there, oh. but no one actually followed through. Yeah. Yeah. Couldn't do it. I don't remember gesturing that. <laughs> I would have gone. Wow. You have a uh, well in right now at your house. You don't need to. It's true. We're loaded up, man. All right. Um, so. We're done with most of the business. Any reports? Perm emergency perm. Oh wait, yes, no, wait. This is Cedar Swan. Right. What about the um, Cedar Swan? So we yeah. have Keolis and Certificate of Compliance. We got some. Oh, I know what's next on the agenda. It's not on the agenda. Oh. And it has to do with trees. Yes. Oh, none of us saw it. It's, it's like because way, I have way back in the woods. Trees in my yard. It was built in the seventies. Wetlands. And if I said anything, I might be. It could be perceived as I was trying to say something in my favor. So I'm just gonna let Chuck handle it, and you guys can do what you will. So we're, we. It's aggravating. I know. But we still need to meet. No, no, no. Oh. The trees? Yeah, trees. I was talking about the tree policy here. No, no. This no, is this is something different. different. This is, this is, oh. We, we talked about it. Gotcha. If we get to, go ahead, but I can't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you need me to take over. This is the nudge. Or Chuck. Well, I thought Chuck was going to Chuck is going to tell you about it, where it is and what it All is. Right. Okay, Chuck, Let you're on. Uh, sure. Um, so a gentleman at uh, 110 John Carver Road. Uh, this is, you know, when I did email the tree committee, uh, Jim at 110 Cobb Road, uh, back in the day, planted some trees, which were too close to the power lines, and they've been, um, they've been hacked back mm -hmm. a lot, and one has actually died. Mm -hmm. And he would like to replace those trees. He what kind of trees are they? Uh, one is a maple. And that's the closest one, and I don't remember what he said the other one was. And I'm going to say a maple again. It just and this probably is one. So let me get uh, the drawing I tool. I know where you are. And I know the house, and I remember the trees being cut. Okay. Is it I coming? It's coming. You're coming from Birch Meadow. Because I know that. So yeah. Because my kids play sports over on the Cascade Field. No, actually, they're over at Turf 2. Oops, get to it like that. You see that so line? you come along Birch Meadow, you drive over the, um, yeah. are those yeah. the, two over the two. river. Those are the two spots. All right, so here's, here's, yep, yep. But we know that this is only a 100-foot jurisdiction because we just went through this Arcadia thing. This is one of the trees. The other tree is right about here. Yep. They're outside the tree row, so they belong to this guy. This one here has been topped by by um, RMLV. Maya, Maya Tree Service uh, as they go oh. by, or the RMLV or whoever else does that. Um, this gentleman loves his trees, and he's proposing to have a company come in and stump and grind both trees, and he's going to plant another tree approximately in the same area. This is a typical thing that happens. It's on lawn. What's not typical is <coughs> we don't have a permit that allows uh, like someone to agree in advance to our conditions. So the only one this fits in under my uh, reading of our regulation is an RDA, mm -hmm. which would cost $150. Why not a minor permit? 
not specifically only trimming is in the minor project permit. And I would I want to suggest tonight that we we add tree replacement if you want to take down a tree within a certain amount of feet, like over 50 feet, which we are now, and um, you're going to replace the tree, then it's a minor project permit. And you guys could consider also waiving the tree, the fees, which is only fifty dollars, because they they need to throw that money into the trees. Yeah. Mm. Is that so on? Is that excuse me? Is that on the tree lawn area? No. No, it's just off it. The tree lawn is right here. But did the are those town trees? No, no it's not oh. on the tree lawn. So are we talking amending our? minor project policy well it's not really or is we, it specific to this project when we redid the regulations one of the things that was left open ended was the fact that we would uh, continually add projects that the commission found to be um, uh, you know minor minor in nature thank you minor in nature Th that, that, that's absolutely right. Impact. We want to keep that list, but just because it's not on that list does not prevent us from calling anything we want a minor project. That's fine. I, I do not. So on a case-by-case case 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 basis, basis, we can, yeah. I mean, somebody can challenge us, but we can call anything we want a minor project. Yeah. No, I, I think this is a good minor project example. I just want to make sure he does not plant a Norway maple. Right. Um, everybody who plants a tree gets the gets the the talk, <laughs> the native <laughs> tree talk. <laughs> and I do send them the uh, the list that we have, and I've sent you guys a list, so you know exactly what I'm sending you. Yeah. And I don't think we have a diameter requirement either. No. no. So I mean, and that that yeah, makes there's no it requirement to replace. I mean. No, what I'm saying is age, though. You know, so size of tree. Is yeah. he taking those out? Only because of the electrical line? Yeah, he's sick of them coming through. One's dead, so that one's coming out because it's dead. Mm -hmm. And the other one continually gets knocked back every time they want to trim the, trim the elect around the electrical line. Well, why is that not going to happen with the new one he planted? He's because they're, he is planting them further back now. Now, yeah, 10, 25 years from now, depending on where he plants them. Yeah. You know. I don't know how much room he has <coughs> here, but this one's supposedly further back. Well, if hey, one's dead, do we need anything at all? Would they come before us for? No, that dead one, I wasn't. I think, I, I, I don't have them in front of me, but I think our regulations say that if you're planting native vegetation in a landscaped area, you don't need anything. I, didn't, I, didn't I, didn't have, foot. I have I a regulation. I think that's what they say. I don't know where that's it says what that. our intent was. That if you just want to plant native vegetation, uh, you want to plant that you don't need. So define tree. landscape. This is lawn. Yeah, lawn. Well, isn't that so you, landscape? You wanna, you're good with that. So yeah, not absolutely. a garden. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, oh, um, okay, so part of the minor project checklist. 3D is planting of species of tree, shrubs, or ground cover native to Massachusetts. Yeah, I think even. So I think this applies. Well, I think even we said you don't need anything. It's just the removal. It's the removal. That's, so that's the one right. dead, there's, no. there's one dead one which could just be taken yeah. out, but there's the removal of one tree. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I agree it's a minor project. Okay, great. And I don't know if anybody opposes. I think and then for the tree committee, can we, can you guys remember Please. that we want to try to create a policy that, um, are we on the agenda for that? Because we have a policy written. Do we have a meeting date? Oh, that's, oh, I forgot. Waiving the fees when or they agree really in happen? advance to, uh, replace the trees. So if that could be worked in or if it's something you guys can think about. So that's something you want in the tree well, policy. Well, yeah. Think about this. If somebody wants to plant a native tree in their yard, I don't even think they have to come before this commission. No. As long as they're According 25 feet from the... 
This wasn't about planting. This was about. Uh, I know, I know, I know. I realize that, but I, I think that's that was the intent when we revised the regulation. So, do you guys want to talk about the tree policy? I have. Uh, I forgot we met and we have minutes. When I sent you the draft. Yep. Which I wanted to get some feedback on, just for are we on the right path? Um, Are we finished with this did, part? Did Sorry. we get a draft? Okay. I don't I think know if so. I sent it to everybody or just um, Nika, Al, and I Chuck. saw it, I didn't recognize it as such. I didn't see anything. It's short. Can you tell us what happened? <laughs> sure. We, uh, I relinquish the rest of my time to the tree thing. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have anything else, Chuck? Well, we, we had um, on the agenda, we didn't have anything, but there was, is, are there any um, well, we, well, unusual activity? Yeah, the uh, unauthorized activity. Is that something we want on the agenda? Yeah, that was that spot you guys checked out on the agenda. There, there's, I put in the notes. Possible there. unauthorized activity. Right there. Protected resource area. 13, 13 Tennyson, Tennyson Road. I don't know if anyone looked at it, so I should. We drove by on, on Sunday. On-site visit. Oh. So. Was on-site it a tree head? Oh, okay. It was a clearing. Of someone cut down trees? Yeah, I mean. Is that the house that just sold? It was on the market? You know, it, it could have been. It sound, it's sound a greenhouse? Um, Cape? I don't know. Do you recall, Harry? Sad, I, I don't know if it was recently sold. All I know is. <laughs> Where is it? <laughs> so we went, we went to look at 13 Tennyson, which is behind Coolidge Middle School. Yeah. Off of Forest Street or mm -hmm. Forest Glen. W in Poets Corner, you know, Whittier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, That's Bill Hex has, isn't it? Oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> Close to it. So, so yeah, so that oh, house, the yellow. It? The yellow lot, um, which is adjacent to a wetland. Mm -hmm. We did not go on the property. We didn't leave my car. Uh, what we could see in the backyard was what appeared to be a two-tiered set, two retaining walls, significantly excavated. I couldn't tell if it was added or graded. Ooh. Yeah, graded. Graded site behind that is really an issue for the Conservation Commission per se. Looks like a fairly steep cut into the bank with no remediation. And that's all to the right of the wetland below that 100 foot gradient. And you can see it's, it is it's elevated in that It's a pretty map. steep slope. Mm -hmm. It's up um, but it's in within the... And if there were any trees, they're not there now. How did we... How did you hear about this, Chuck? Was there a tattle? Neighbors. <laughs> yeah, tattle tale. Tattle tale. <laughs> it was reported to the health department, um, who reported it to me. Now, either that lot or the one south of it had a violation four or five years ago for cutting <laughs> trees. <laughs> We had issued an enforcement order. I wonder if it's the same guy. You know, some of the problem with this, and I'm not sure it happened this way, is there's no building permit for that kind of activity. So if they even mm -hmm. make a call to the town, it, you know, it, they can be told that that's, that's not something they need a permit for. But wouldn't they be directed to you? Yes, that's our, that's our policy. Um, if there's a building permit, but if there's no building permit, you probably wouldn't be directed to you. Well, it, you know, we've been working on that a lot, and it's gotten a lot better, but I'm, I'm not sure how this happened. But it could have happened just somebody knowing. I mean, the, it, and it sometimes it doesn't even take um, someone coming to town. It, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, you know, excavator operator. Who says you don't need a permit for this? And I work in this town all the time. You don't need a permit for this kind of work because you know I, I know what's going on. So I don't know how this happened, but it, but the you don't need a permit thing could be a, a big part of it. 
even though it was a different kind of permit than we usually issue, or we issue. So anyways, I wanted to go along that uh, and take a look and then decide um, if there are any next steps. Have you been on this site? I have not. Well, I have not looked at it. I think the next step is for you to go on site and see if we need to issue a um, notice of violation or a, um, what do we call it? A, uh, enforcement. Enforcement. Order. Order. Okay. Is there. What's the scale on this? So 100 feet, it was definitely within 100 feet. They have a measuring tool here. Yeah. yeah. I mean, what I, what I saw was basically excavated the whole, the whole backyard, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, so where you see a slope there and those contours. Right. Gone. So, so if my finger is 100 feet, 100 feet for the wetland, it was over to here. Well, we don't know if that's really the wetland. It, it, it might be close. It looks it's really close to the property line. It looks pretty close. That's 38 feet right there. Okay. So it's, it's within 100 feet. Okay. So Can't erase it. It's coming <laughs> from the projector there, Harry. Huh? You want to erase it? Erasing something else. <laughs> no, there's <laughs> blue stuff on there. <laughs> this is Tell an off color joke about how do you know when a certain person of a certain national origin has been using your computer? There's white out on the screen. <laughs> To any natural That's Dan Quayle. <laughs> <laughs> that was um, years ago. I heard that too. For something like that, it is at best uncomfortable and at worst illegal for one of us to go on his property, but Chuck, as a town employee, can go on his property. Now, if somebody's filed an application, we can go on their property. It's a right. it's part of the deal. But for this, it, it should be a town employee. So the only, I in town have, know that I can enter any property that has an easement on it. Um, if, it if there's an indication of violation of the Wetlands Protection Act or bylaws, you can you can access that property. Just now, the administrator. Obviously, you should go to go to and, and introduce yourself and tell them what's going on. And if they raise a, a holy stink, then you should probably back off. But you well, do have the right to go and do that. Um, would um, I was just going to propose that you know um, we have some sort of protocol, something sort of the effect of um, we've, we've received some information that there might be cutting within 100 feet of wetlands on your property. Um, Driving by on the road, there seems to be some land movement as well. We'd like some access. Please call us. We'll stop mm. by on this day. Well, I'll just, if I'll we don't hear from you, uh, we will consider enforcement actions. I mean, something that kind of lays it I, out. I wouldn't even threaten the enforcement until we don't hear from them. Give them a chance to, to respond. So, I mean, I think it's fair to say to somebody, please be advised that you know, ignoring this notice mm -hmm. could potentially sure. lead to the issuance of an enforcement order. We just go, well, first step was to go to the property, and I think I'll just do that and see what happens. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I just like to have a paper trail to kind of record. Well, instead of writing to them before we know what's going on, mm -hmm. I'd like to see what's going on and then document it. Okay. Okay, so that that's great. And um, any bills to approve? There are no bills to approve. Minutes approval. Anybody look at those? Uh, I Somebody. Well, I have one minute skill change. The only other the change, and I figured I'd just bring this for everybody because I don't remember. I think we had. It made it seem like there were two votes on Strawberry Lane. Uh, Nika's approval for. Get what the original time was. A, a, month. a month. A month. No, I, so I made the that motion. I had a motion to extend the permit six months. Jamie seconded. 
And then you made a motion to extend the permit for one month. Jamie seconded it yet, but did we actually, I think we, we didn't voted. vote on that first one. Okay. So we didn't vote on the sixth one. I thought we had to vote on it to I get it off the table. We do. Yeah. We're supposed to. And I think we did. I think you're right. I think you're right. I think you're right. Yeah. Okay. And that's, I just yeah. want to make sure you're we right because I think we talked about it. Okay. And that was it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I'm sorry. Six Nick, months. Miss Galen made a motion okay. to approve extend for six months. Jamie seconded. And the and the motion was defeated. Defeated. Okay. Yeah. I think that was. I have it reversed. I think it was. Zero. Yeah, so I think you have it six to zero. Yeah. And it should be zero to six. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? So I sent I sent an email with just on Strawberry Hill. I, I sent it at five o'clock. Oh, okay. So um, it was just just the wording. Um, I don't know if it's on here. So she owned all those lots. Mm-hmm. Yes. That's mm -hmm. amazing. Did you see her house? Yes, it's they that old, old house. It said all that huge right. French doors. Yeah. Her, is her son, Dr. Mr. Carroll, that taught at the high school? Or I have no I idea. don't think so, but I could be wrong. Um, English teacher. I think he was fourth. Oh, was that So him? maybe it was his son? <laughs> Never heard a narrative like that before. Oh, my God. It was a horrible oh. story. So all I said, I, I can't find it on my phone, is is instead of saying, I, I said, the site is not controlled. I don't have the minutes in front of me. Which site are you referring Strawberry to? Strawberry Hill. Oh, Mr. Curtis's. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, the thank you. It said. Oh, it was horrible to listen to. <laughs> Mr. Curtis does not agree with extending the okay. permit because okay. owner has not been in control of site in the past. What sure. I said is because owner has not controlled the site in the past. Has not. Okay. Okay. Well, I, I had another I had another addition to the mm -hmm. minutes for mm -hmm. um, COC uh, Mariano Drive Roadway. Mm -hmm. So that's 0627. Mm-hmm. So that small paragraph, uh, you said Mr. Couillard recused himself, mm -hmm. you know, et cetera. Bond of $38,000. Um, I wrote this down because I wanted to make sure it made it into the minutes. It said, um, Mr. Couillard promised that um, if a tree dies, even without a bond, he'll replace it. Um, and he plans to top coat the whole roadway plus driveways now that all the lots have been sold. It said that. And that okay, so that is what that says. But yeah. what about the tree replacement? Yeah, promise if a tree dies, even without the bond, he'll replace it. Right. Okay. His promise. Promise. Solemn oath at a meeting. Are now in the minutes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and that was it. All right. 